The way we define connected immersion today is really bringing stories to life in a holistic way. And that's storytelling that surrounds you, seamlessly incorporating technology, using the world as your stage or your platform, and bringing in the audience and letting them have a voice and letting them have a meaningful role in the story, both personally and as part of a bigger community. One of my first assignments that I was given was to work on the Indiana Jones attraction at Disneyland. It was eye-opening as a storyteller to work with all of these amazing tools that you had, whether it was the motion or the music, the audio animatronics, the special effects. Everything is immersing you in an environment where you're having an experience, you're creating a memory, you're creating a strong emotional connection with these characters and with these story worlds. One of the unique ways that we approach storytelling is by thinking about how to let the audience in. That involves a lot of upfront design, you know, designing the spine of an experience so you know where you're going, where you're leading people to, but also providing the framework where they can interact. And it's not just for show. They're actually moving the story forward. They're actually causing things to happen or to not happen. And you've provided for that. Ultimately, especially in today's environment and where things are headed, people want to have some programming control over their life. So you're actually doing something that says you recognize that and you're willing to give them an added value experience and you're willing to trust them in a way. We were approached by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails to create an immersive story experience around the release of an album. So in year zero, we knew that there was an expectation that some of the music would leak. So we came up with the idea of putting a new single from the album on an unmarked thumb drive and putting them around the concert venue and seeing if someone found them. And it turns out that a fan did find an unmarked thumb drive actually in the men's restroom and took it home, put it in, went online on the forums and said, I think I found a new Nine Inch Nails song. What's great about that is not only did he individually have a fantastic story, but the community immediately gets engaged because their first reaction is, of course, well, no, you haven't. So they have to vet it and they go through that process. And in going through that process, they really take ownership of it. You know, this becomes their story, it becomes their thing. When you tell a story today, you get almost immediate instant feedback and you have to be prepared for that. It's like you're having a two-way conversation with your audience. You can either listen to them, you can ignore them, but they're definitely going to have a voice. In bringing people into the story world of Tron, we created a website experience, Flynn Lives, an organization that people could join to look for Kevin Flynn. We're not going to stop until Kevin Flynn is back. They were having a meetup at First and J, which happened to be during San Diego Comic-Con. People showed up. They were given black lights, sent on a scavenger hunt where they got to unveil a neon sign and it was Flynn's Arcade. So the lights glitched, they got to go behind the Tron machine and go for the first time to the end of the line club. This way of writing people into the movie, that energy and excitement in the story really translates so people feel like they have an investment in what's happening in the real world. We recently had the opportunity to co-develop a PlayStation 4 exclusive title, Infamous Paper Trail. And in this, we were able to marry episodic content with traditional console play. So what that meant is that you started in the world on the console and that you ran across a character who would actually lead you beyond the console. You could go interact with a live action version of a character. You could go explore the interiors of places that maybe you couldn't access in the game, bringing you into a much closer connection with the fiction of the world and what differentiates this game from other franchises. We've been experimenting in Connect Immersion for over a decade now. We've gone past early adopters into a much broader audience who are willing to have more agency in a story, be involved in a story, take some action in a story. And as technology develops, what this is gonna mean for us as storytellers is that we're gonna have the opportunity to close the distance even more. People are going to be able to live in the worlds that they love. Things to keep in mind um, if you're trying to create a connected immersion experience. First of all, don't be afraid to let the audience in. Don't be afraid to give the audience some control in your world or your story, even if it's just through their participation that they're bringing it to life. 
you're still obligated as a storyteller to provide that spine. You need to know where you're going to be able to get there. You need to be able to provide a structure which allows the audience to go on a journey where they're gonna have a quality experience. Technology has had a profound impact on storytelling. Not the tenets of good storytelling, because telling good stories is still the same today as it was 10,000 years ago. The thing that's changed is we now have platforms and tools and access that we didn't have. And that gives us a lot of opportunities as storytellers. And as technology provides us with more tools, as it becomes more ubiquitous, not only do more people have access to it, but it's gonna allow for deeper immersion and deeper connected immersion. That's what's exciting about the future of storytelling.